Good. Good boy. So every time we come around this corner, move back towards the house, I had a lot more pulling. I do have the long line because I wanted to let him run a little bit this morning. Good boy. Good boy. Thank you. That. That is excitement, maybe a little frustration. He might be thirsty or hungry. There's a lot of different options, but. Good. Sorry, there's a lot of different reasons, but I still need him to, good, not be pulling on me. So this is another example of a really great place, good, to work on the pulling. Even if you have a really short walk or you're just taking him out for a potty break, if you know that he's going to start pulling right about here, good, this is where you work. Hey, thank you, pulling him back. Circle. Ah, uh -uh. one, ah, uh, thank you, ah. Uh. Good, looking for a distraction. Good, one. Watch him speed up. That was better, much better. Good. Ah, uh -uh. come back. Thank you. What I'm telling him is, I would like you to refocus on me when you feel that leash tension. Not just stop and glance back. Good. Good. Thank you. Not just move into it. I'm upping the stakes a little bit. I'm increasing what I'm asking for. Where's my keys? Do another couple circles here. Good. Turn early. Come in. Not adding any extra tension. Good. Just waiting. Good boy. Uh huh. Frustration. Get us tangled again. Lovely. Good. This is where it's also nice to have a longer leash. I can give more slack if I need to. Or I can just take it back up and have a shorter leash if I need that. Good. Good boy. This way. Good. Slow. Very good. Okay. All right, at this point in his training, um, I'm gonna focus on alternating between outlets and impulse control, okay? And outlets provide an outlet for his energy, for his frustration that's going to build up during the rest of our training, and the impulse control is patience. Can you think clearly and do what I ask even when you are really excited about something? And what this does is, I say done, it teaches him that pushy behavior, demanding behavior, like barking, jumping, whining, um, nipping at things, grabbing the leash, mouthing, are not going to get him what he wants. Whereas patience and engagement will get him what he wants. You went that way. There you go. Okay. So a lot of this because that last bit of our walk was impulse control. It's you can't pull me to get what you want. Pulling will not get you what you want. A loose leash will get you what you want. Good. Get it. Have this. Okay. So this is our little bit of an outlet, and then we're gonna work on some impulse control, which is going to be good things like that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, anything where he's trying to jump or force me to give him what he wants. Good. That is impulse control.
Nope. Good. Good. Get it. Get it. The other reason I'm focusing on this is that it carries over into everything else really well. Right? Impulse control in one area will always help. Will always help with impulse control in another area. Good. So if we work on his impulse control around me having food in the kitchen, for example. Oh, very nice. That will help him. Don't knock the water over. That will help him learn and work on his impulse control around things out and about, like when he wants to pull towards something that he wants. Because we're setting up a different way of communicating. We're changing how we're changing how he thinks about things. Ah, from God. I can force you to give you give me what I want, or I have to fight you to get what I want. Two, you will give me what I want if I give you the right thing. That's it. Yes. If I give you the right behavior, there's a way to get you to give me what I want, and it's nah, ah, ah, ah. good. That's it. It changes it from demanding to asking. Ah, uh -uh. good, much better. <clears throat> also expect this type of training, focusing on impulse control, to result in more frustration, Get it. which means more outlets. Sit. Yes. That's why we're alternating. It doesn't seem like I'm doing a whole lot, but I am. If you if you do this, good. You will see results in his ability to be patient for things that he wants. Yep. Good. That's it. Yes. All of that. Waiting. Waiting is so good for them. That's it. Yes. Good, yep. That's it. Yes. Okay. Unclipped his normal leash so that we have a little bit more space. Again, gripped like this so it can't slide through my hands. Good. 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 Let's do a little lap through this way. We never go over here. digging in. Good. Not something I necessarily want to deal with in the moment, but it is a good thing to make a note of if he starts doing that because it indicates that he's probably not understanding the leash conversation as well as we would like. Or it means that we good are using too much too much pressure to pull him away from things that he wants to sniff. Good job. Go ahead. Right. Another thing that could lead to that, come back, to that digging in could be if he pulls hard to get something and we give in. I know. We're tangled. Can you fix it? Good job. So if he pulls a little bit and you let him keep going, and then he pulls harder and you give in and let him sniff whatever he's dug in to sniff, you're gonna get a lot more of that behavior. Good. Because what you've taught him in that instant is that if you pull a little bit harder, the leash tension will turn off. So he's gonna do that every time he's like, nope, that's the thing that I'm willing to drag you for to sniff he's going to drag because he's learned that if he pulls just a little bit harder, you'll give in. Good. It's another reason to keep walks short is it keeps you from getting tired of having the conversation. Prevents your fatigue in terms of stopping and 
keeping the tension really light. Good. Keeping the conversation light and consistent. Good. It is better to have short walks that are consistent throughout the entirety of the walk than it is to have long walks where you only keep up with the conversation for the first 15 minutes or so and then sporadically throughout. Come on. Come back. Good boy. I know. You got us tangled again, baby. Let's, let's get out of the room. Good. Good. Good boy. Same thing here. Having that conversation where his reaction is a little bit more intense out front good. allows us to do that really good work. Good. Okay. With minimal work on our part. We're not far away from home. So if we do by any chance push it too far, which happens, if he gets a little too frustrated, we need to be done. We just walk in. Impulse control. Good. Okay. All right. That. Back down. Much better. Not good. Go up. Good. Up. See if you can think about it. Oh, hey, the kitchen is very nice. Yeah, so this is another really good place to work on this. This impulse control, his patience when he wants something is with his food. So I'm not going to reward right after that. Nope. Because he's smart enough to pick up that pattern. Good. Giddy. Of noise, jump, push off, treat. You don't want that pattern. You want noise. Good. Giddy. Lack of a response. Good. Giddy. Followed by treats. Boy, get it. <laughs> slipping around, huh? Good, get it. Good, get it. Here, sit. See what it does. There's another one. Jumps but jumps but doesn't put his paws up. Those are the two patterns. Good, get it. So now we interrupt them. Yep. Two. Good. That's it. I know, I do stop after the sit every time, don't I? There. Ah! Sit. Heel. Heel. Get it. Heel. All right. Good. Heel. Sit. Very nice. Okay. Break the pattern by stopping it. Interrupt. Sit. What the pattern is now. Good. Good. Okay. Messy. In there. In there. 
Very good. Get him. Heal. Good. Get it. Up. Down. Sit. Heal. Good. Up. Heal. Heal. Sit. Get it. Sit. Okay. There's the kitchen pattern. Here's the jump pattern. Watch them do it. Oh, kitchen again. Boy. Jump. There it is. So you have two options when you want to break that pattern. Don't do it. Ah. Sit. 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 Yes. You have two options. You can prevent it. You. Sit. By putting another input in before he has a chance to practice. Sit. Ah, sit. Good. Prevent him from starting. Ah, ah. Prevent him from starting the pattern. The second option is once he does the pattern, so say you don't pay attention early enough to go ahead and jump. You know, pay attention early enough to interrupt it like that into the kitchen. Back out. I'm going to put time and, and behaviors between that and the reward. Down, up, uh, down, and heel. Sit, heel, through. Right. I'm rewarding those behaviors, not the the pattern that he's building. Good. Right here. I'll interrupt. Have him do something first. Sit, sit. Yes. And heel. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Very good. Dogs are very pattern oriented and clever herding type dogs like this one are especially are especially pattern oriented. We've, sorry, it's stuck. We've selected for it in the breeding in order to get really good herding dogs. Yes. We've selected for attention to detail, attention to patterns. Good, very nice. So he's going to, he's going to try to build patterns. Yeah. Yes. Everywhere that he can. He is going to build patterns everywhere that he can. Because, get it? That's how he learns how to predict the future. Dogs like predictability. So pattern making helps them to figure out what's going on based on, here, oh, I found some others. Helps them figure out what's going on based on what they've seen before, okay? And they only need two repetitions of something to figure out that that's the pattern, here. And it's really, really helpful if you can use it to build behaviors that you like, but it can be really difficult. Sit, through, sit. Very nice, get it. It can be really difficult if they build a pattern of behaviors that you don't want. So for example, 
thinking that he needs to go into the kitchen and back out to get a treat, or thinking he needs to jump right here to get his treat. Good. Ah. Down. Get it. Heel. Sit. Get it. Yep. That's it. Now, oh dear. Here's one here, too. Good. Get it.